Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the School of Self Worth. I'm your host, Nicole Song, and this is my Your Clear Calling Success series. When I sit down with a few of my remarkable, inspiring past students who share how their lives have been completely transformed by Your Clear Calling. If you're not already familiar with my signature program, it is the exact step-by-step system for Asian American mission-driven women to get promoted in 60 days while working 20% fewer hours to feel fulfilled and aligned in their work every single day. I am so proud of the women who take on the transformational work of this program. And today I get to sit down with Ali Gustanian, who came out of YCC and really got all of the next steps for herself in her career. She recently gave notice at her job at NBC News, and it's so cool what is coming up for her next. So make sure you stay tuned so you can hear what she decided to do and what prompted her to make this change. And as you're listening, if you're like, oh my God, I see myself in Allie, and this is exactly the kind of support that I want for myself, DM me promotion on Instagram at Nicole Song and let's chat. Okay, friends, let's dive into this remarkable episode. Allie, I'm so excited you're here with us. Welcome to the School of Self-Worth. Thanks for having me, Nicole. Um, I'm so excited to have Allie here because she's a client, an amazing human, and just has, like I feel like, just a really remarkable journey from what happened at the beginning when we were working together to where you are now. She has totally changed her life in many ways since we started working together. But before we get to the very fun part of like how Allie's life has transformed, I would love to go back to when we met. You're probably going to remember the month better than me. It was last last summer. Yeah. Can you just give us like a little sketch, like a view, like what was happening in your life at that time that you were feeling pretty challenged by? Yeah. So I think we probably met, it would have been July of 2023. Mm -hmm. So I was in the Asian American Journalist Association's Executive Leadership Program, um, and Nicole came on for a session to talk about boundaries, work-life balance, how to keep yourself grounded, and her story really resonated with mine. I mean, I know you talked a lot about your time as a journalist and, you know, how difficult it was, you know, just being in that profession with breaking news and work life, not having any sort of work life balance and, um, you know, wanting to do something different, but not necessarily knowing what it was. Um, so it was interesting. Your story really resonated with me because I felt like I had gone through kind of a very similar arc of, you know, I'd been in this field for a while. I kind of worked my way up the ladder and I was just feeling burnt out and tired and needing a change, but not knowing where to go. Um, So we connected during that session that Nicole was on for uh, the executive leadership program. And then afterwards, we're DMing on Instagram. And she was telling me a bit about um, some of her programs. And it sounded like something that was really going to be very beneficial for me and very helpful. So you know, that's then we just started working together from there. Amazing. Thanks for sharing that. And I'm curious if you could get a little bit into like the nitty gritty a bit of what was happening for you. Were you feeling really stressed about work? Were you feeling like I don't want to do this anymore? Like what exactly was happening for you? Yeah. So I had, I had had a very difficult few, probably about two years or so at that point. Um, You know, I had, I had worked really, really hard to get promoted and I finally got this big promotion in November of 2021 Um, And I think as kind of a type A overachiever type, I really, really wanted to impress my boss, especially since I had a new manager at that point, to really show like I was very much deserving of this promotion and title, and I could handle it. So I was, you know, I was just working constantly, Mm -hmm. constantly, constantly, constantly. And then um, the Russian invasion of Ukraine happened in February 2022. And I just found myself working around the clock, um, late hours, early mornings, weekends, you know, just, just all the time. I wasn't even, 
I, I wasn't taking breaks throughout the day. I was looking at really very difficult content and, um, you know, just really trying to do my very best as the journalist that I was. Um, and then I got to a point where I literally went on vacation for my birthday. I think my body had been running on a thousand times the speed that it should have been going. And then all of a sudden I'm on vacation and I stopped and I think my body panicked and it literally told me like, this is not working. So I've been struggling a lot, you know, with panic attacks and anxiety and depression from, you know, just a really hard time with work. Um, I ended up having to take a leave of absence towards the end of that year. And I was, you know, during that time, I was really trying to figure out what do I want to do? You know, I was kind of getting to this point in my career where I had, you know, I gotten this senior title and I was thinking, well, what do I want to do next? is this something that I like to do still? Is this something that makes me happy? Is this something that stresses me out more? Like, where do I see myself going from here? And I was having a really difficult time kind of figuring out my path and what I wanted to do. So um, I ended up applying for the Asian American Journalists Association Executive Leadership Program, which was very transformative in helping me to, you know, just uh, work through different ways of leading and taking care of yourself as a leader. And, you know, when Nicole came on and um, talked to us about uh, managing burnout and boundaries and all those sorts of things, um, it really, it really hit me that that was something that I was really needing to do and to really, um, I guess, to really invest in myself. Um, and so we we're talking about the York Claire Calling program. And, um, you know, it sounded like a great fit to be able to, you know, work with all of these amazing women, work through, um, you know, Nicole's curriculum that she had built, and really be able to figure out what it was that was next for me. Because I had kind of been continuing in this role, applying for jobs, but not really knowing what I wanted to do. I was looking at other journalism roles and I was looking at communication roles and I was looking at really just a whole range of different jobs. And I kind of felt like I was just like throwing all these ideas out there and I wasn't really having any luck at all. You know, I was, I was having interviews and I, you know, I felt like they were going well and I was, you know, making it to final rounds and that sort of thing, but nothing was really sticking for me. And I really wanted to find something that would stick and not only just stick, but something that was what I wanted to be doing, something that I was excited mm -hmm. about, something that for me, I would be passionate about. And um, also something that could give me a better work-life balance and, um, you know, really help really, I wanted to really be able to regulate my nervous system so that I would be able to then figure out, okay, what is it that I want to do? And then where do I kind of go from there? Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that was such a challenging period for you to really start to work through that. And then I'm curious then, so once you were inside the program, what were you able to discover right away and help yourself with? Um, well, line of choice was a mm -hmm. huge thing for me. So, um, for anyone who hasn't done Nicole's and even Nicole's programs, it's really, I would say really the pillar of, um, the your clear calling curriculum. It was all about noticing kind of where your energy levels were and your mood and seeing, okay, am I in a good spot? Am I where I want to be right now? Am I in a positive space? Or do I feel myself dipping into negativity and worry and all of these kind of negative emotions that really just aren't helpful in any sense of the way, uh, any sense whatsoever. So um, that was really transformative for me to just be able to even notice and take notice for myself of where I was at that time, because I think that I tend to be a fairly reactive person. I think, um, 
you know, as someone with ADHD, I think reactivity kind of comes with that almost. So being able to stop and pause and force myself to pause and recognize where I was in that moment, um, you know, was really very helpful and working on those different strategies of, um, you know, I think I used to just make all these rash decisions and get really emotional about decisions because I would be below the line of choice when I was making these decisions. And once I really started to pay attention to those things, I found myself, um, you know, being able to regulate my emotions a lot better, being able to realize kind of where, um, where I was. And if I was in a bad place to just tell myself, you know, stop, let's go like bring yourself back up. Um, I know one thing that we talked about was music and how, um, you know, how helpful that can be in, in different settings. And so I, I actually created a playlist called getting above the line of choice. And, you know, to this day, it's still something that I listen to and it's, it's just a great playlist because it's just a whole, it's, it's just a whole wide range of music that I love. And, um, you know, I can always count on it to get me like right above again, and then be able to, you know, make, um, wise decisions for myself. Mm. That you, you spoke about that particular principle so well, because I feel like one of the things that happens for so many women who come to see me and I was, I've just been working with some new clients and they're just like, wow, I'm really reactive all the time. And I'm like, yeah. And like, we just, that seems so normal. And I think in journalism in particular, but just like in life, a lot of us are just thinking reactive is the way. And I'm like, well, there's actually a lot of ways to be in life and you don't have to be reactive. And once you can really exit that, you can start to see and make your decisions from a totally different place, which is what people work on in the course. It's like, okay, like, let me see what's next. What do I really want to be doing? Because you were weighing, like, do I want to stay in journalism? Do I want to move on? And looking at that question for yourself during the course of course of the six months together, and then you actually came to a conclusion. And what did you see for yourself in that? Like, once you really could stay above the line of choice. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I can talk about the first kind of idea that I had for myself, you know, I found myself in this really positive, um, you know, motivated, creative kind of space, because I had been focusing so much on, um, you know, prioritizing myself, staying above the line of choice, keeping a routine for myself. So I had actually come up with an entire idea for myself, um, where I was, I, I pitched this idea to this big executive um, and my former um, employer where I was going to be um, where I could develop programming for her journalists to help them onboard properly. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time on this and I felt myself being able to be very creative. And I spoke with, um, you know, a lot of different executives. I kind of had this like I felt very confident about myself and my ideas. Um, and, you know, I came up with the presentation and um, basically an entire, what would be, I guess, in the business world, an entire business plan. Um, and I workshopped it with a lot of different mentors. And I was really proud of myself for being able to come up with this idea for myself and be able to think through all the ways in which I could execute it. Um, the executive actually did end up asking for a job for me for the role. And unfortunately, due to, you know, the state of kind of the media industry right now and um, the financial situation, it just it it wasn't the right time financially. But it was really exciting for me to be able to have that idea and be able to really present it, execute the idea um, and really, you know, be confident in myself in, um, in saying what I, what I wanted. Um, mm -hmm. so, so that was great. Yeah. That's amazing. I remember that energy you really had at that time. And it wasn't even so much about getting to that outcome. It was more just like being able to generate your life in a totally different way and be like the creative force behind what you wanted to do next. And so obviously that one didn't work out, but then uh, afterwards things still changed for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I had been thinking through grad school programs um, for probably a few years, actually more than a few years, I'd say probably since about 2016, 2017. 
Um, and I was always just kind of telling myself like, oh, this isn't the right time. This isn't the right program. Oh, you can do this later. You can do this later. You can do this later. Um, but finally, I said to myself, I was like, you know what? I think now is the right time. Um, so I had originally planned to hopefully go back to school in probably about a year or so from now. But I ended up going um, on a tour of this program that I'd been really interested in for a few years. Um, it's at Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, their Master's in International Public Policy program, which is a master's program for mid-career professionals. Um, so I went um, to the campus in Washington, D.C. I went on a tour and I spoke with some admissions folks and I had thought that I had been past kind of the admissions deadline at that point um, because the official deadline had passed, but they told me, well, if you can get the whole application and letters of recommendation and everything in and your essays within the next two weeks, we are st- we could consider you um, for start in fall 2024. And so at that point, it felt things felt right. You know, I had been wanting to leave my current role and I thought that I was going to you know, have to wait on school because I had missed the deadline. And then I realized, oh, actually, I could get this done. And I think the journalist in me, uh, the the tight deadlines um, always motivate me to get things done very quickly. Um, so I was able to get all of my essays, application, letters of recommendation in within the a week and a half. And then I think maybe less than a week later, I found out that I got into the program and they gave me scholarship money. Um, And things just felt like they were working out. You know, my husband's job, um, he was able to transfer to their Washington DC office and things just finally felt like they were coming into place. And I think that throughout my kind of career search um, and like just my career journey and this journey for myself, things just hadn't been falling in place. I would be a finalist and then I would get rejected for a job or I would be very meh about the job, but thought I would maybe take it, but wasn't totally sure for myself. And I wasn't feeling very certain about any one decision I was going to make. And then this presented itself going back to school this amazing program um and the extended deadline and everything just kind of felt right and felt like it had been um falling into place and i've been you know i've been wanting to to study you know international public policy and international relations and kind of pursue further education for a while and you know the time just felt Right. Well, I just love that so much for you. I didn't know about that deadline extension piece of it. So that's amazing. Well, a lot of what we work on in the course is like, when are we going to be in synchronicity? Like, how do we start to let things come to us instead of us forcing stuff to happen? And that was like such an example of it. Because I remember really at the end of your clear calling, we were just like, okay, Allie, how can you just be like, I let the things happen, like it let the flow happen and then totally it just like clicked into place. So I love that so much for you because now, right, within the last week you've moved to DC and now you're like starting this new adventure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's great. And I think that one thing I had worked on a lot while in your clear calling um, was this idea of attachment. Mm. I am the kind of person that I very much like to try and be in control of my life as much as possible. You know, starting from, I think, a young age, I had this whole plan for myself. I was going to do this, this, and this. And then by age 30, I wanted to have this title and make this amount of money and really, you know, trying to force things when, unfortunately, that's not how life works. Um, So I think that I've learned a lot. And it's been really helpful to think about attachment. And, you know, anytime that I would have a job interview, you know, I would go in it wholeheartedly, but then have to remind myself, like, if this isn't going to work out, it's not going to work out. And that's okay. And we move on to the next 
step. So um, I think that that has, that's something that I've held on to very much in being able to, um, I think as my mom always said, like, let it go and just relax a little bit and realize you, you can't control life. And then when things are kind of meant to work out, they will work out for themselves. Well, how did that practice of detachment help your mental state when you were doing it? Oh, I mean, I just, it, it was so helpful. I think that when I was going into interviews, super attached to things, I was feeling very, very nervous for the interviews. Mm-hmm. You know, I would want to be, I, I just felt like I ha- was rehearsing my answers over and over again. And I felt I need to get this job. I need to get this job so that I can leave my current role and, you know, putting way too much pressure on myself where it got to the point that like my mental health wasn't great. I wasn't sleeping well. Um, you know, I was just really on edge all the time and that's not a way to live life. Um, you know, I mean, I already had a very stressful job being a journalist and then to add my own personal stresses on top of it, where I was literally making myself feel sick. Um, you know, that was, that was not going to be productive whatsoever for me. So, um, once I was able to detach from things and let go of those attachments, I felt much more relaxed in interviews and much, just much more myself, much more creative, able to come up with, you know, different ideas for myself. Um, whereas I think that Previously, it had just been burnout, 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 which is not a place from which you can be creative and come up with ideas. Mm, Yeah, so well said. Well, you know, I am really celebrating you being in that practice because I know we were really working on that detachment for the last couple of months. But like, look, that's what that's what actually starts to generate. And I know sometimes it can be so hard and especially like when we have like our Asian family pressure and we're like, I got to figure this out. You know, you get super attached and then you're like, nope, it's actually when you release it that you can really make progress and then actually have your life open up. I mean, I feel like for you, since this has occurred, it's just like, oh, like I can just see it in your face. Like you're just so much happier and things are progressing in ways that are so awesome. So I'm just like super celebrating you, Allie, for that. Um, Yeah. And then um, what would you just say what it's like working with that group of women that you were with during your clear calling? Oh, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, just being able to have a community of, you know, like-minded women who are also really just striving to improve themselves and be the best versions of themselves. You know, I think being able to have that support system and realizing that we were a lot of what we were going through, um, others were going through and it was very much relatable and we could bounce ideas off of each other was just really amazing. I mean, I think that um, it was a really great environment and so supportive and, Um, I think that sometimes it can be rare to find environments where it's women supporting other women wholeheartedly. Um, And this was just, you know, that environment. And I was able to just learn so much from, um, from, from the different women in the group and, um, you know, definitely develop some, some strong bonds. Mm, Amazing. Well, I just love seeing you all thrive and support each other and, Um, just doing such incredible things in the world. Well, Allie, thank you so much for sharing your experience and your story. And I've got a few fast action questions for you if you're up for it. Okay. All right. First question. I know you've been moving, but what was the last thing you watched on TV? Veep. I was literally watching it right uh, right before we recorded. Um, It's one of, for me, it's one of those um, comfort TV shows, Mm -hmm. which sounds strange because it's about a pretty like intense topic, but it's just one of those shows that I've watched over and over and over. And I, like, I've probably memorized most of it and (laughs) I just laugh at the same jokes in it every single time I watch it. Um, so yeah, it was the last show that I, that I watched. Well, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is so funny in that role. So awesome. I love Veep too. I'm sad. I was so sad when it ended. Okay. All right. Next question. What's on your nightstand? Well, I just put together a nightstand actually. (laughs) So we put it, we just, I just got a nightstand yesterday. So it's a good thing that I actually have a nightstand right now. Um, Let's see. I have a lamp. 
I have one of those um, sunrise lamps on there mm. that like kind of wakes you up with that natural feeling sunlight. Um, I think I have a photo of my husband and me in France. Um, and then at night, my phone. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Beautiful. Love it. All right. When was the last time you tried something new and what was it? Oh, hmm. something new. Got to think about this one. I mean, you have a gimme, you know. You just moved to a new city. Oh yeah, I guess I guess that counts. I guess that counts as something new. I was, I was thinking, like, you are. yeah, yeah. I I just moved to to DC. Um, so I've I've been in New York um since I was in college since 2011. Um, yeah. so being able to move to a new city is is fun and exciting, and um, you know, I'm I'm just really excited to be able to, you know, get to to know a, a new city. I was like, that's a pretty big new one. So I was like, good job. You're there. Okay. Last one. What are your top three most used emojis on your phone? Can I pull it up? Okay. Sure. You okay. <laughs> Let's see. To be exact. I mean, they give you like 16 that you use all the time, but I'm sure you have three. Um, so the laughing emoji, which mm -hmm. I feel like is pretty basic. The red heart. Mm -hmm. And then there's one where it's like a smiley face with just like a tear coming down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is like my sarcastic one that I like to oh. use. <laughs> so funny. Well, Allie, I am just so, I love your growth and expansion and everything that you've done since being in the course. And I just am so excited to see you shine in this coming year at Johns Hopkins and doing your master's. It's going to be so incredible. And then thank you so much for sharing your story with everyone listening from School of Self-Worth. I know that they got so much from hearing your growth and journey too. Thanks for having me, Nicole. It's been great.